Hello and welcome to Discus. I'm Linda Heimberger, the Electronic Resources Training and Outreach Coordinator. Today we're going to learn all about Shakespeare in Bloom's literature from Discus. Discus is a service provided by the South Carolina State Library. We're going to take a look at the Shakespeare Center today. We're going to look at uh, finding background and biographical information on Shakespeare and his times, full text plays and sonnets that are available, video productions and documentaries and how you might download those and utilize those, literary criticism and reference sources. So if you or your students have uh, more specific searching that you would like to do rather than just browse, we'll cover that as well. And then we also have uh, a feedback survey, which you'll see here, and you're welcome to uh, participate in that to give us your feedback. And you can always contact the Discus team. South Carolina users may access Shakespeare Center from Bloom's Literature. Bloom's Literature may be accessed from the scdiscus.org site from your school or your public library web links. There are two ways to access Shakespeare Center. You can either hover over Browse and go to sh directly to Shakespeare Center here on your right, or you can scroll down from the main page and click on Shakespeare Center here. Notice when this page loads along the left side you have an A to Z list of plays from Shakespeare and you will find that they start with All's Well That Ends Well and end with The Winter's Tale. And we do have your Julius Caesar, we have your Macbeth, we have uh, your Othello. You'll also find along that list along the left, you'll also find that his sonnets are covered here in Shakespeare Center as well. And I'm going to go to the end of that page and try to scroll this way to save a little bit of time. And you'll see that the sonnets are filed alphabetically between all of the plays. So again, you're going to be able to find uh, some good information there on the sonnets as well as the plays. So if we go back up to the top of our uh, Shakespeare Center here, you'll see on the far right side in this column information about William Shakespeare himself, background on his culture and society during his times, history and politics, language and other backgrounds for Shakespeare. So this is great to introduce a lesson or it's also great if your students are, are wanting to do direct research here. So we'll click on William Shakespeare first so that you'll be able to get some biographical information there. And when students click here, notice on the far left they have an overview article on William Shakespeare. And there are also related tags and they'll be familiar with this format of information using social media. But you can see here that they can also um, go to early texts of Shakespeare's work, Shakespeare's life, etc. And we'll actually go out to one of those in a moment. But notice across the top here, um, once a student uh, looks at an article, perhaps they want to use some of the information to quote or to summarize in their paper, they're going to easily be able to cite it using the citation tool here in the center. It defaults to MLA. Others are available. It can also be exported to Noodle Tools or EasyBib if that is supported by your school or district. You'll find the citation information in all of the resources that you have here in Shakespeare Center. So if a student is wanting to um, perhaps use a, uh, an image in a project, they'll also be able to cite that image. Notice on the left, they're able to print the article. You are able to actually share that article out either to Google Classroom if you're a Google school or you can share the record URL if you are a Microsoft school. You can actually share the link to the article and you can do that uh, by uh, posting it within your learning management system uh, as long as you're actually posting it behind uh, an authenticated 
system, you're able to do that. You're also able to email directly. So if you know uh, perhaps another instructor might be interested in this particular article, a student, or your entire class, you can email that link out. Notice as well, you also have download options. So if perhaps if you're working maybe with a public library or a school there, you are able to download this record just by clicking on download here. And that will, as you see in your bottom left corner, that will provide a PDF format that can be saved down to a device. There's also the read aloud function that you'll find on each article here and the student is able to turn that on. So you can see that can be toggled on or off. Shakespeare. So you have all of those utilization there options for delivery. Concerning the facts of Shakespeare's life. And if students want to go out and perhaps um, explore more just about Shakespeare's life in addition to this article, they can click the tag on the right that will then take you to any articles, images, or videos that are related to Shakespeare's life there. And this is going to be a keyword search when it's searching uh, for this information. Notice on the right there are ways to narrow the results just by pure biography or if they're wanting to look within a book chapter and perhaps expand their search a bit, they could just click on book chapter to find any of those articles that are pulled directly from a, a chapter in a book rather than a reference work. So we have Shakespeare the individual here as an example. Notice we have the same format where we have all of our download options, our citation options, but you also get the added benefit of seeing the other chapters from this book. So if the if student perhaps uses or a patron uses some of this information on the left, they would easily be able to explore further. So if they're interested in Shakespeare as philosopher and poet, as you see here in chapter 11, they could toggle directly there. If they're more interested in uh, perhaps the, the times, um, perhaps um, some of the uh, additional information, they could toggle on any of those chapters. So we're going to travel back to our search results here with the back button. And then we're going to look in addition at um, ways to actually um, look at additional information. So if we go, um, a quick way to get back to the Shakespeare Center is just to click on Home back to your browse at the top and Shakespeare Center. This takes you back to the browse portion and this allows uh, students and teachers and uh, your public librarians who provide support as well. Um, you'll be able to easily locate for each play. You'll be able to easily locate links to difficulties of the play, key passages of the play, critical introductions, and some critical resources. So if you're asking students to look for a secondary source, you're going to be able to find that for each play. Hamlet's more popular amongst high schools, so I will pull this one for you. But you can see in addition to these various uh, passages and critical pieces, there are also related resources. And this is where you'll find the full text of the work. So if students are needing to access the full text of the play, they can easily do that here. I'm going to click on full text of the work. You can see that the student can easily browse to a particular act. Uh, perhaps they want to refer to a particular section or there's a piece that they're having difficulty with and they want to share it back to you um, as the teacher. Um, they would have that option here. Also, if they just need a print version of the text, there. Also in the related resources, there are ideas for essay topics that are here. Any additional videos or images that are related 
to Hamlet or have the word Hamlet somewhere in the description. There's also the how to write about Hamlet and notice that is available uh, for each of your plays here. So if students are uh, early exploring, perhaps they've already read the play, you've done some class discussions and different uh, interactives with your students, this will also give the student some good background on reading to write, being able to understand the passages in relation to critically thinking about it and sort of identifying some of those key themes of the play. As you see here for Hamlet, you have death and drama and theater there, and the characters. And with mention of that, you'll also find at the top, if we go back to our browse piece, you'll also be able to find a, a quick character list for the play. So if the difficulty initially is students being able to distinguish the characters, for instance, they can just click on characters here or they can look at the character list in the overview and then be able to easily print this out um, if they want to print out the list. They can easily uh, access this information uh, to be able to refer back to. Notice at this level we now have reference criticism. This is the character list, images and videos. So the videos are those that you're going to be able to use as an instructor or the student would be able to use if they need if they're maybe struggling with a particular act in the play and they want to be able to hear it or see it they can do that if there is uh, an image if they want to find any related images that they may be able to use in a project or a presentation that they want to add. Once again, um, I'll just click stick with the Hamlet image that's here. Once again, there, the citation information will be available. So they will also be able to um, do good justice to cite their sources if they use this in a PowerPoint or a Google presentation. So when I return back to my next piece here, and you can continue uh, to to go back to each section here, but sometimes it is just easier to return to Browse and Shakespeare Center if you're wanting to get back to this landing page. I wanted to show you also uh, within the, the plays themselves, um, you are also able to um, You're able to actually pull those essay topics here and that could be something that you might want to prompt for some discussion. Perhaps if you're at a public library and, and students are struggling to, to come up with a, maybe an idea topic they they're, to, they're want to write on, these essay topics can be an, a nice place to start. This is also something that you could uh, share or download to your Google Classroom if you wanted to use some of these as prompts for perhaps some discussion there as well. So if you want to actually use or view a video in the class, you can also go um, to the video section here. And once here, you're able to uh, click directly into the play. So whenever you click on the main link into the video, you're going to see more options as well. So if you wanted to uh, highlight the appearance of the ghost, or perhaps you were talking about the, the theme of despair and you wanted to go directly uh, to that section of the video that is going to, to deal with that topic within the play, you can easily toggle and utilize that. Notice there is a closed captioning in the video. So you're able to turn on the English closed captioning here before you play um, the video. Oh, that this tomb, too solid flesh would melt. 
So you are able to make it full screen, obviously there. Notice at the top, these are the options. Um, if students are actually, again, once again, citing sections of the video, that citation information is available at the top. And here, if you wanted to email the link to this uh, segment to yourself to be able to pull up in class, or perhaps you wanted to share it to classroom, that is available for you as well. And I'll show you one more way to browse these videos. If we go back uh, to our uh, just our, our main page in Shakespeare Center here, you'll see that if you click directly onto a play, if you go uh, to Hamlet from this main screen and just click on Hamlet here, you're going to be able to see the breakdowns of those segments as well. So sometimes it's a good it's good to know that there are other ways to access the same piece depending on where you are or utilizing it in class. You can also search on more specific terms. Perhaps you've already gone past the background piece in the discussion. The students are already well into their themes. They can actually go uh, up to the top here uh, and search directly. So they can search Bloom's literature on, uh, let's say, Ophelia here. We could search on Ophelia and Death or Hamlet and Justice uh, or any of those themes that we want. So if students are looking specifically for tie-ins to different themes within a play, they can combine some of that terminology. Notice across the top, once again, your tabs are going to give you the options of what is available here. So the Ophelia and Death terms are mentioned in reference books and in criticism, so in critical articles, if students are needing secondary sources, perhaps uh, to be able to, uh, to investigate or, or question some of, some of the literature, kind of be able to support what they've already discovered, maybe find it that secondary source. So we're also going to look, um, if you search just directly on a play, which typically a student would do this, they could just go directly into Bloom's, search on Macbeth. Notice all of these various resources we've talked about are across the top in a very handy format. So your student or you or, or public librarians can also just do a direct search and be able to pull information from that Shakespeare Center. So if they're specifically looking for images related to Macbeth, once again, notice when they do a direct search, they're able to narrow results here on the right. So if they want illustrations versus photographs, if that's available for that particular piece. If you, as an instructor, want to look at the videos that are available on Macbeth, after conducting your search on Macbeth at the top, you're able to narrow those results as well. So if you're looking for an educational video, or maybe you just need a dramatic production, you want to be able to show one particular scene, perhaps in class that students are struggling with, you can limit to the dramatic production options. And notice some of these are, are um, some of the dates are really old, 1905. So you've got, you can compare and contrast different productions. 1994 here for this particular one, but you can see that you can go directly into scenes here. So we can open this scene two, act five, scene two in Macbeth. And that's going to work exactly like I showed you in the first video demo, where you're going to have those um, delivery options across the top. You can actually show the scene. There's a transcript that's available. Notice that that transcript is also uh, downloadable here. So you or the student could actually download the transcript from the video. And that is uh, going to open up as a PDF document on the device that can then be saved to the device. And then also you're able to link the record URL if you want to once again uh, send that, maybe perhaps put it up in your LMS there and you're also able to then toggle back to any portion of that video 
if this viewing this actually leads your class to another conversation and you want to follow that breadcrumb into another scene perhaps you can do that as well so we had mentioned in the beginning that you're also able to browse the sonnet information um, you are also able to look at poems here in full text from the browse portion of Bloom's literature uh, poems that are here and literary classics that are additional full text pieces but I'm going back uh, to the Shakespeare Center link to show you the sonnet piece uh, we had talked about how you can scroll down alphabetically to the sonnets you can also just jump right in and search directly on one of the sonnets at the top and be able to afford yourself all of those tabs that we mentioned before in relation to the plays and there are additional information on how to write about and themes and other pieces there on the right as well so if we look into the sonnet 73 here we can click directly and have the full text of it and also some information regarding Sonnet 73. So that's great if you already know, uh, you know, perhaps the sonnet number. Notice the tags will also assist you or your student if you want to maybe compare and contrast two sonnets. Maybe that's uh, one of the assignments that you want to do. So you can see that you can go back and get various information. Notice the tags do change depending on uh, which article you are in and that's going to be true um, throughout the Bloom's database. So in a nutshell that's how you can get your feet wet to learn all about Shakespeare in the Shakespeare Center from Blooms. You are welcome to contact me with any questions. Again, I'm Linda Heimberger there at the top of the list. You are also able to contact our Discus Office Help Desk, which Desiree Thomas uh, works uh, with and manages and will help you individually if you have questions about any kind of connectivity, access issues, or other, inf other questions you have about the database. So I'm just going to scroll back uh, to the top of the slides here and give you the opportunity to give us your feedback. Thank you for joining us today.